Ow! Man, it's rough. I'm just kidding. It's actually really smooth right now. So today, I'm gonna to talk about texture, how to make smoothed out clay into something a little more lively, a little more realistic, a few different tools, techniques you can use to give your clay texture. So while there are so many different ways to create texture in clay, I'm just gonna cover a few basic ones uh, that you can, of course, elaborate on. This includes stamping, scratching, poking, slipping, and burnishing. Uh, all of them give a different textural quality and in some cases mimic uh, certain real world textures. Okay? Uh, stamping is probably the most fun uh, because you can use both manufactured and organic items to actually press into the clay. I mean, that's really all it is, is pressing into the clay. Um, you can use leaves, bark, rocks, fabric, anything that you can press into clay while it is still moist or leather hard even at some points uh, is a way of stamping. Another method is to scratch into it. Now you can use your fingernails, of course, but this really helps with linear grains uh, like woodworking and using like a fork or a brush or something of that nature. I'll show you. Uh, a lot of people want to know how to do like sand texture. I like to poke the clay, make tiny, tiny little uh, holes and divots in them. Uh, so it's really good for sand and dirt. And then using slip to kind of make a goopy sort of lava look, a, a very soft uh, texture, but that has kind of liquidness to it. Uh, and finally burnishing. Now I'm using the word burnishing and the word slick because I don't want everybody to simply smooth out their sculpture. If there's one thing that I keep on trying to get people not to say is, I need to smooth out my sculpture. When I say refine your sculpture, when I say texturize your sculpture, people automatically assume I mean to smooth it out. That's not the case. It is to retexture it. So let's take a look at how we can actually do some of these. All right, so here we are with a uh, slab of clay. Um, I did do a little smoothing out, uh, you know, with my finger, just like people always think they need to do on a sculpture. Now, I'm not saying that I never, never use my fingers. I do, I do a lot, but I like to have a variety of textures. So once again, we're going to be looking at stamping, scratching, poking, slipping, and burnishing. So here I have some of the tools. Now, they don't necessarily have to be specialized tools. Most of these things are household items or things just found around the yard. Um, the only real specialty item might be this, but oh well. So for our first texture is stamping. Uh, and when you think of a stamp, you might think of, well, a stamp. And this is just that, it's a stamp. It, it's, it's not really meant for clay, it doesn't have to be. Um, but anything that can make an impression can be considered a stamp. And my personal favorite, rock texture. So let's take a look. I know this is like, oh my gosh, it's just like making cookies. Um, but as you can see, this clay is quite soft, but it creates textures. You know, and, and it's not always, doesn't have to be the texture, like this is an old belt. But who's to say that can't be a wicker basket or a brick road or something of that nature? I like using bark from the yard. Now, you can use this over and over, you can change the direction, and that creates, actually, on a miniature version that looks like rock. It doesn't have to be a bark of a tree, all right? Definitely use some variations here. Uh, another type of stamping would be, again, like I said, with a physical rock. Now with this, you um, 
Most of the time with rocks, it's really awesome because even a big rock can have the texture of little rocks and vice versa. So if you're doing something on a miniature scale, uh, then you'll get that nice texture. You can always combine these as well. This works really well when the clay gets leather hard because you can actually apply some pretty decent pressure. But as you can see, it kind of gives this look like it's a broken rock surface. Ah, I love that, love that. Traditionally, stamps were made um, to make a three-dimensional form as well. If I take some clay here, right, press it into this. Now, these are things that you have in the lab or you can purchase, um, but if this reminds you a little bit of Play-Doh, well, yeah, that's basically it. You know, you can even use maybe some Play-Doh molds for that. And you can score and slip. Right. Apply that on there. Boom, 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 clean up the edges. Ah, look at that, stamping. Oops. I don't really like using this too much because uh, it doesn't, it's not really the artist's hand. All right. So there you go, stamping. Next one is scratching. As the name insinuates, it means to scratch. Uh, the reason why I use it for linear grains is because if you're doing something like a tree or hair, then you want to go with the flow. So if you use something like a fork, you can create nice variations into just basically scratching into it. Now, you might say, well, you're making lines, right? I'm making impressions, and I'm maybe going to utilize some various pressures and maybe combine it with scratching other areas. So I have maybe a kind of a fine wood grain. And you could even do this on an individual. This is just a needle tool. There we go, that's kind of looking like maybe old wood, you know, and you can even add a knot. And now you can say, well, you're drawing again. Well, but it depends on how it's executed. And when you use lines in conjunction with repeated elements like makes a pattern, then all of a sudden you are doing something more than just drawing onto it. You can always take a brush and kind of soften up the line work, right? Either way, just simply scratching into the clay is a pretty powerful tool. Now, remember Rolly Crump? All right, taking that spoon there, and he's basically making the wood grain of those tiki gods. There you go, I mean, you know, it's pretty regular, I'm, you know, let's kind of make a big, gash in here and stuff, like the wood is splitting. Okay. Then you probably went back and added a little more texture. Right. There's a variety of things. Even take a brush, soften it up. Right. Which this has a very different feel than say, a rock texture or a wood texture or a braided texture. Right. Sometimes people like to go a little bit uh, sandy, right? And they want to create the sense of sand. Now, you can even look at this rock surface and say, hey, that kind of looks like sand, right? Maybe that's a good way to start, right? That by itself kind of looks like dirt, right? But sometimes people will take like this tool, which is basically just a bunch of tiny little needles and do that. Okay? A wire brush, that's all it is, okay? You don't have a wire brush? You got a needle, you don't have a needle tool, you can go to the store and get like a uh, rotisserie chicken kit. You got these little needles there. What's the difference between this and this? Nothing, it's a needle, right? And this I like to use for larger ones. Now you might just say, well, you're just poking into it. Yes, exactly. And you know, to some degree, you can kind of stab at it. You're creating these different textures. Now, something about texture is the deeper you go, the more shadows it makes, 
all right? And so if you want to create darker crevices, dig deeper. Same thing with this, you can even, like the wood grain. All of a sudden that becomes a strong shadow, right? It becomes a really thick line, right? Now the last, no, not the last, I'm sorry. Another thing you could do, I've been using it to some degree, is use slip and water. Uh, you could do this to maybe soften edges, but maybe if the clay is wet enough and you use some of this goopiness, you can get actually a similar effect as the stippling, except it's a little softer, a little more gentle, okay? And when this dries up, it'll be a very gentle, uh, kind of like an orange peel look, right? And even using the brush, right, almost looks like waves, right? Point being is that there is no right or wrong way to create a texture, but these few ways are good starts. Okay. The last thing I want to show you is burnishing. Okay. A lot of times people take their finger and they smooth out an area, but what happens is it starts to dimple. You get your finger marks in there. You can't get into the tight little areas. So I like to, again, use some tools. One of my favorite tools is a soft pebble. Okay. Now, it's not going to work very good on this super wet clay because all it's going to do is stick. Okay. This is really better for when the clay is leather dry and um, it has a lot of resistance and then you can really kind of burnish the surface. Eh, it kind of works, but right now it's working pretty much as good as a finger is. So um, while it's really hard to demonstrate it here, that's the tool I use. Okay. Now I also love using wood tools, you know, even the edge of a brush. Let's just go ahead and use this and that is great for yeah, smoothing it out. If there's a little bit of clay on this, it actually creates a texture, okay? So in no way should you limit yourself to like tools like this. Almost anything can be used to make texture. Now, you can't argue with me that in that very short period of time, with a very minimal amount of uh, ingredients, I've been able to create a tremendous amount of exciting textures. All right, so there it is. Texture on a slab of clay. And of course, you can always do something else with this. And bam, look at that. Now it's a abstract piece of art. Woo, man, look at what happens when you start ripping apart the clay. Even that becomes this beautiful texture. Sometimes clay by itself makes great textures, especially when it gets a bit uh, leather hard and it starts to crack and stuff it uh, can make some great textures all on its own. So again, have fun with it, experiment with it. There's no wrong way to do it, uh, but you have to find the one that works for your artistic intent, all right? So go for it, have fun. Okay.